choose that particular thing. Well, if, if I don't know if you had a chance to look at the board over yes, there. Yes, um, And there's there's actually four time periods the village was occupied, and uh, this house pit spans all of them. And so what we've done is we we built a model based upon mapping and geophysics of the growth of the whole village, decline and growth again. And, uh, and we studied specific houses, trying to look at sort of social issues and economic issues. But then we wanted to have a history of a single house where we could understand what individual families went through over the course of hundreds of years. And House 54 allows us to do that. It has 15 superimposed floors. And, uh, and so that's what we've been working on since, since 2012. What's the earliest floor you've got down to, um, date-wise? I don't know yet. Uh, we're at old stuff right now, and so date-wise, it could be as little as, as 1,500 years old, it could be as old as 2,000 years old. Okay. We don't know yet. And this but, is right here at this site? Yeah. 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 The main, uh, based upon our, our earlier dating a dozen years ago, across the whole village, the, the Bridge River One period starts around 1,800 years ago. And, uh, and about 18 to 1,600 is the first sort of settling in. And, and then the first rings of houses is Bridge River Two. There's two neighborhoods. And then in Bridge River Three, the site doubles in size. You get the double rings of houses and the single ring down there. Mm -hmm. And But House 54 spans all of that. And uh, it, it was abandoned between about 1,000 and about 500 years ago. And, uh, and people came back about 500 years. And uh, House 54 was occupied in the late fur trade. So uh, uh, about 18 years. Can we walk down and... You can. Is it just you all? Well, yeah, I guess the... Uh, oh, well, he's coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's the room film crew oh, sure. With I want to warn, I want to warn everybody. To we, ha we had a wind disaster yeah. last night, yeah. and the house is a mess. Oh. There's grass everywhere. There's oh. Holes fell in and smashed walls. So it's a we're, messy house. We're cleaning up. <laughs> so we're cleaning house. Okay. But please come down and see. Do you, okay. you want to go back? Well, I don't know. I mean, if people are getting a line up there, I mean, you know, yeah. if they're... Well, you do, do what you want. Yeah. They, they had stone. Generally, no, jade. 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 Nephrite jade adzes. And they would basically... They generally wouldn't cut a tree down like that. They would dig through it. Yeah. And then they, they would split it. And uh, they, they generally didn't use boards, though. Generally, they would create posts and beams to make those things. Yeah. And uh, we find... over and then last the night got it. the wind got blew it so hard it actually lifted one of the covers off and took totally threw it somewhere we have no idea where it went <laughs> yeah and, uh, and so there's grass and it's a mess but you can still kind of see what's oh yeah on. no that's yeah. that's great it was good timing to be able to and see it mark it all up and then down one one block at a time yeah. so the, the house is broken up into four blocks and you can see floor okay and so item five is always roof and so we have two is the fur trade and uh and so that little dark line around the top yeah that's the fur trade roof. which one is that uh, the brown color the well the, the little dark layer right around the top the very oh okay very top. okay that's the down to the red and black zone okay. farther down the wall yes. that's the 5A that is the floor sequence. smaller 
or probably more oval roundish house in that area. Then at 2K, the house would be more of a rectangular shape. Mm -hmm. And then for seven floors, they lived on that surface. And then at 2E, they doubled this way. And so that's actually the 2E floor. Looked for a 2E. We had a 2D, but we didn't have a 2E, and it looks like they dug out the 2E before they established the 2D floor. So we have a three-quarter sized house for 2E, because uh, we have no evidence of 2E here. So where Catherine is, this is the 2D floor. We've, uh, we've just finished working on the 2D part of the floor there, and we're just expanding south right there. Um, that's this big storage pit right there. Right. Where that post is? Yeah, the yeah. storage pits sometimes were, they would sometimes dig into the storage pits to establish house posts. And so those are actually house posts. The house post that's not fully excavated there on the left, our left, is a 2D house post. The one in the bottom is a 2C house post, and that one on her left is a 2A house post. It's all different floors. And how deep, maybe you said, how deep, how far do you think it'll go? It's at and, the bottom. Oh, you're at the bottom. At okay. The bottom. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, have you found it? There's a 2B storage pit right there. What would typically happen with these pits is they would start their use life as a storage pit That's and at some point would become a refuse pit. And oh, yeah. So have some you... of them, I'll show you over here, some of them uh, we had a, a quite different use histories. Some stayed uh, storage pits and others quickly became. So what our, our excavation system is that we, we, we've divided the house into blocks, we have meter square units, and then we divide the meter square units into quads, thus the mm -hmm. little green Quarter squares. Meters, yeah. yeah, and then we, we point, map, everything we can get in place. Otherwise, if we don't see it in place while we dig, it goes to the screens, and we collect it by stratum and by, by quad. So we can do pretty intricate maps. Have you got anything there you can show us that you found? Nothing? It's Nothing. all over the house. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. It, have you found any good size arrowheads then? Or? Not, a, not. not a lot of uh, arrow points hmm. this year. The, the fur trade roof and floor had 130. No. Uh, they, they were actually in the business of of uh, arrowheads. Well, they, they, they were, they, they're, they had an industry of deer hide production for trade. So we had 250 high scrapers and over 130 arrow points yeah. and three iron arrow points, uh, trade points, and uh, from you know 1840s, 1850s. And, uh, but the deep floors here, always you know, there's the odd one, but not a ton. Uh, we get a lot of worn out scrapers and knives, and, uh, uh, both the big slate scrapers as well as the. So will you be putting a report online with there is pictures? A if, you, if, you, if you just Google Bridge River Archaeological okay. Project, it will okay. take you to our website. Okay. And there are, are downloadable uh, reports and publications. Yeah, and you'll have pictures of what you found, of course. Yeah, oh, a wonderful. Some of the fur trade stuff. Yeah. We haven't photographed all the old Bridge River 2 3 stuff yet. Yeah. Great. Um, let me show you over here. So this is the, the where we finished two years ago in, on 2B. It, most of that is substrate, so it's just the natural sediment. And you can see these cutouts. Um, there's a cash pit there, pit there. There's actually an enormous pit right there mm -hmm. that we didn't fully excavate. Another really big one there we didn't fully excavate. This is our test trench from 2008 here. Oh, yeah. Um, and you can see in the wall, that one has really unconsolidated sediment. Whereas, if you look in the wall of this one, you can just barely see it's micro-bedded. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, this one and this one have this history where it looks like they used it for a season, and then they topped it up with clay, and they used it again and again and again and again. Maybe more than, more topping up maybe more than once in a single season. There's so many micro-beds in there. The, the animal bones are quite different from these versus that and some of the other unconsolidated pits. The unconsolidated pits always have a lot of animal bones. Diversity, whereas these ones have very few animal bones, not much diversity. Again, suggesting that they're just cap, just restarting the pit with clay, and the odd thing gets mixed into that. Whereas this is a major kitchen cleanup. Yeah. And uh, 
some other interesting things that I like to point out. See that pile of rocks right yes. in there? Yes. At one point, they did do a cleanup, and they cleaned up uh, dog waste. Uh, there, there was a pile of dog copper lights in there, piled with rocks and capped with clay. And, uh, and uh, those things are very useful because the DNA people can work on those. Oh, and so yeah. we've done mitochondrial DNA analysis on the dog copper lights and dog bones from here. And we've discovered that there's uh, two mitochondrial lineages of dogs. Uh, one is a, a lineage that connects with other villages in the region. And another lineage is it's related genetically to the other dogs. Mm. But it looks like it did not breed with, say, the Keatley Creek dogs. Oh, so they kept, the dogs. kept their own dogs. Yeah, very and then, breed the dogs. Yeah. And didn't interbreed them. Right. So that oh. was kind of an interesting finding. We're still working on that. Do you get a good view here? You can see the different yeah. floor levels. Yeah, that's our best wall. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can see the, the fur tray roof, and then the 5A roof. Which is the red, the, the red and black, yeah. And then go below that, and then smaller yeah. sequence. There's another little black line. That's mm -hmm. another little roof. It only shows up here in this block. And then after that, you can see a roasting pit in the wall, mm -hmm. and more floors going down, and Nate's excavating a pa another cash pit. Um, the two L floor down there uh, is we're just exposing. We're on two L. We're just exposing two M. We think that house probably was. Uh, Obviously, it's partially under the walls here, but we're not, we don't think it goes over that way, and it surely doesn't go over here. So, it was a much smaller earlier house. Uh, the original work you did, you saw ground penetration radar? We did radar, we did uh, conductivity, and we did uh, magnetometry. And it was really magnetometry. Uh, I'll show you the map. Show you the map. Yeah. But that, that, it couldn't get us down, it could give us no idea what to do down there. The radar, we went all the way down. Um, even the radar, the images were good enough to see where where cultural deposits were versus natural strata were. Uh, so we did radar on this house. So how much longer will you be working on it this year then? Ah, yeah. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah very good. We'll certainly check out your site and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We're trying our best to preserve wild salmon. Yeah, yeah. We go, uh, well, we go down to Lytton today, and then then uh, down to Hope, and and. Uh, and oh, then Sham, at Sham, and we stay the night there, and then we go to Chilliwack, and then to Matsqui and then to Vancouver and have a big rally down in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. so this is the second year that we've done it, trying to bring awareness. And uh, we, that crew, uh, I, I, I talked them to coming. They were such a rush to get going because, you know, they, I didn't think they were going to come, but, you know, I mean, so it's a once in a lifetime to me to see this, right? Sure. Yes, you know, right. it's a for a, bit of a mess, but no, well, well, I mean, no, not a mess to us. It's fine. It's amazing and to be allowed this close. Yeah. Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, we find a lot of salmon remains. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Salmon bombs. Wow. We're, uh, okay. I guess you can tell if they're, uh, they're sockeye or chinook or. Almost all sockeye. Yeah. We do get the odd. Approaching. We had chinook for supper last night. Oh, and is it the best? I th I like the early chinooks the best. They're so rich, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh really yeah, well, I was raised on fish, so that's good. Well, anyway, I guess we'll get back for breakfast. <laughs>